what you can see here on my desk are the results of some sleepless nights. I made some really special black and white collage fodder, as you can see here. <laughs> and because of the fact that I've never seen something like this on YouTube or in this junk journaling world, I've never seen someone using this technique before. I thought I would turn on the camera and show you how I made these papers. Hi there, this is Luise Heinzel. Welcome to my channel. And yeah, I'm so excited and I hope you are excited as well. Um, as you can see, I've um, experimented a lot with a really special paper and I have really yeah, awesome results and really much results and really different results. So let me tell you um, how I made this and yeah, what you can use it for and so on. So um, if you are watching this video and you perhaps think, okay, this is a really straight tutorial and she will tell us how we can do that so that we have awesome results and everything will go uh, the right way when you do it the first time, then please stop the video and watch another video. Then this video is not for you because <laughs> this video is, um, yeah, really much experimenting. This technique is fail and and uh, success at the same time it can be yeah that you do the same things step by step as i'm doing it and you perhaps get a totally different result but i can promise you it's so much fun and it's yeah it's yeah <laughs> simply fantastic i think so um what I used as the base is this paper here and this comes on such a roll and this is this um, paper that reacts with heat. So when you, um, for example, get a receipt, then um, that is printed to such a paper. And I make this thing here because um, it's not really printed. So when this paper comes into the machine where it later comes out, then... Um, there will be no ink on this paper later, but it will react with heat. So I will uh, demonstrate that in a second. So I used this here. Um, if you don't know where to get such a paper, please check out the info box. I have linked um, this paper in my Amazon shop so that you can get it there. I searched for the right paper on Amazon and you will find the link um, so that you can order it uh, down below in the description box. So <clears throat> the first thing that you have to find out is um, where, uh, which of those both sides of the paper is reacting with the heat. So I, as you could see, I teared this and this is both, yeah, I, I would say the front side. Okay. And now I turn it around so that you can see what will happen. I take it here with my fingers, hold it down. And you can do this um, test by yourself, uh, yeah, in a s similar way. So I will just take my heat gun. And as you can see, on the one side, it gets black. And here, it seems to be... So that is the other side. Uh, it seems to be, yeah, n like nothing. But when you turn it around, you can see that it also reacted. But if you want to make this technique, you have to make sure, please, that you have this side, uh, yeah, f facing you. So this side has to be the top. So, um, yeah, <laughs> let's take another piece and... Um, in this video, I would like to go with you through my steps that I experienced um, after each other. So the first thing that I thought that could work was um, that I perhaps could take such a stencil and try to get the pattern of the, the stencil to my paper. So, um, yeah, this is a normal stencil made out of plastic. And perhaps you you think, oh, plastic and heat gun is not a good idea, but 
uh, please believe me, if you do it carefully with your stencil will happen nothing. So if you don't uh, hold your heat gun like so for a few minutes, then nothing will happen. If you move it around, everything will be okay and your stencil will be intact afterwards. I take my um, paper here from this yeah, terminal paper roll um, and I take some washi tape, but um, you don't have to do that. I mean, you can also press with your fingers like so and then um, heat it up. I just do this that uh, you can see it better. Where's the beginning of this washi tape? Uh, so I will uh, glue it, uh, not glue, <laughs> I will stick it to my uh, desk so that you can see everything better and that my hands are not in the way so i go over this paper like so that it is really flat and then i stick my washi on the top and on the bottom and then i take my heat gun and um please um concentrate your view to um how i go over this paper now um, I will tell you later what I did and why I did it. I can't uh, tell you while I'm doing this because it's too loud. But please look how I do it and then you will realize yeah, how this can work. So um, be careful not too close to this thing. So I mean not like so, um, but I think five uh, or yeah, I think five till eight centimeters distance will be enough to not melt your stencil. Okay, so I think I like this. <laughs> I already like this. And this looks like um, a wall made out of stone with this black things here. And there's written something. I absolutely love this effect. And um, as you perhaps could see, um, here where the paper gets really dark, I went a little bit closer um, only for... A really short time a little bit closer so that the paper gets more heat and then I went away with the heat gun so that I have this really dark effect here you can see the um, writing is much darker than this uh, splashes here so I mean that are no splashes these black areas I don't know how to explain that but you see it here um, and in some areas the background is white but you can see the this writing here and I really really love this abstract and uncontrollable thing here um okay so that's one possibility how you can do this of course you can use any um stencil that you have i also tried it with this one so those um, abstract stencils look really really great on this paper but i also love this writing here um, perhaps you are thinking okay um this is a little bit too dangerous for me, what Louisa tells me. I don't want to um, yeah, have these problems that perhaps my <laughs> stencil can get melted if I go too close here. Or perhaps you think when I'm experimenting, uh, I'm in this flow and I don't want to destroy my stencils. Then there's another possibility what you can do. You can also use some die cuts for this technique. Yes die cuts <laughs> so i have these here so these are uh, from tim holtz i think you you know this wildflower collection there are several sets um i have the packaging here so this is this one here if you are interested in that i don't know if that that number says anything but uh, it's this set um and the good thing about the stencils of course is that they are um made out of metal and when you put your heat gun on top i mean the heat then it's not uh, a problem so you can make your paper really dark the more heat you have the more darker this paper gets um and yeah so that is a possibility um an alternative thing to the stencils i do it here in the same way i will just glue 
my pieces of this thermal paper here on top and glue them to my table so that they can't uh, fly away. Okay, so, um, and then you can use a spoon. So this is just a normal spoon. And you take it like so, and then you go over the paper there where the stand... Oops, sorry, don't move it, um, where, where the stencil is. So um, I hold the paper here with my fingers so that it can't move here like so, because, yeah, washi tape... Uh, and you know the stencil underneath it's not flat um, and then I go over this here until I can see those really tiny lines here on the paper and this paper is really really thin so you have please have to make sure that you don't go over this with too much pressure so um I like to take my time and go over it several times like so um, instead of pressing too hard because yeah of course this die cut is made to cut paper and when you go over this thing too heavy or with too much pressure then the paper can um, tear and you will cut it out with using this spoon but yeah do it carefully then nothing will happen. Okay, so now we have this. Hopefully you can see that. You can lightly see those lines. Uh, I will take one off and show you that in detail. So you can see here is yeah such a really, really mm, glossy and yeah some kind of a line. So now I will show you what will happen when you... Uh, Take your heat gun and put it to this paper without the die cut underneath. So this is now only the paper. Here I will leave the die cuts below the paper. <coughs> Excuse me, please. Here you have to be really, really carefully. And this is the most uncontrollable thing. It can happen that we get a totally failed piece now or we can get something really abstract and really beautiful so we will see what will happen okay i think just a little, little, little bit more. Okay, so that was probably too much here. But yeah, you can imagine what I want to say. So here we have a really, really abstract thing. Um, you can see those lines. You can still th see them, but they are really light. And when you look not so close, it's really abstract. But please imagine that you have cut out this flower from a piece of paper. I mean, you run it through your die cut machine and then you put it here on top. And for example, like so, then I would say this is the perfect background. It looks like this flower is, um, yeah, in some kind of a fog or, or, you know, it's, I think it's really, really beautiful. So, um, I can't demonstrate that I haven't cut those out because I had no time. I had to turn on the camera and show you that. So I think your imagination is big enough that you can um, see what I want to say. So let's try this one here. The die cut is still below the paper and that hopefully, <laughs> as I said, it can happen everything that makes it all um, a really big difference. So let me show you. I would say this was successful look at this I am so in love with that so I will show you this abstract thing from before and you can see that there's a really really big difference but 
Isn't this just beautiful? I'm so in love. I can't tell you. I am so hoping that you haven't seen this stuff before and that you don't think, yeah, I'm doing that every day. <laughs> what is she talking to us? But I, I am, I'm so in love. Look at this, this glows. It, it's, yeah, like this flower, um, is in the night and it's glowing. <laughs> okay. So now, you could say, okay, uh, she tells us that we can um, use this as collage fodder, that we can use that in our journals. Perhaps um, we can think about some cards, some greeting cards or journaling cards or any other thing that we can imagine that we want to have as a paper craft project. Um, and of course, when you now think, hmm, when there are, is some heat that comes to the paper then my wonderful piece of art is destroyed within seconds of course this is not permanent forever yeah so um when i put a piece of this and or yeah i put a piece of this here on top of uh, a journaling page or I use it as a um, focal point for a greeting card, then it may happen when this paper gets too much heat that everything disappears. But if you want to use it in a normal journal that doesn't lay on, on a heater or whatever, I think then this will stay here for a very long time without changing its color or yeah, without disappearing. Um, I think this is some kind of a philosophical thing. For me, um, this is a great experience, even if this is not permanent forever, because I think everything in life is changing. Uh, when I speak out this sentence and I breath, everything is different. I know that's really, really philosophical and really deep uh, what I'm thinking when I do those papers, but um, all of your journals are not the same tomorrow. Um, when you write something into them, they are not the same than they were yesterday. So do you know what I mean? And um, because of that, this, is su this has um, a worth to me as well, even if it can change. Mm. And I think this can also be a really great thing to do with children and to um, demonstrate what the heat does with this paper. It's a really cool thing to learn something. And of course, it's very much fun to experiment. And I think when um, the child that you want to do it with is old enough to use such a heat gun, um, then it's, yeah, pure fun. And I think you can fill days <laughs> with uh, this technique with some children. Um and now you can think, okay, um, that's nice, but I want to have it permanent. I have two possibilities to make this permanent. So the first thing is, of course, you could take it uh, and put it to your scanner, make a scan and print that scan, or you can make a copy. And then, of course, yeah, on the printed paper, you have it permanent and it doesn't matter what happens to this paper. You have something for ever uh, when you make a copy out of this. The second thing is what you also can do. Um, it's, I would say the copy is the most permanent thing. And the second thing that I show you now is half permanent. <laughs> so what you also can do is you can take your jelly plate or anything else that's a little bit sticky. And then you can take your die cuts and um, put them there so that they stick here and that they can't move. Let me just do that. So let's take the same 3D that we had before so that you can um, compare the results. And when this is here, it can't move anymore. Uh, your jelly plate is, yeah, I think nothing can happen. Um, if you don't have a gel plate, then you can also use this non-permanent spray uh, glue. 
um, and spray that to a piece of cardboard, for example, and then press this down. And when you finish this technique, you can take it off and wash the glue off of this die cut. It's no problem. The die cut is made out of metal, so you have no problems when you take that and um, put some soap on it and wash this uh, uh, glue off. Uh, I think that's no problem. So I'm just taking my paper here like I did it before and I press it here to my gel plate, press it down like so, so that it sticks to the plate as well and that it don't move a lot. I mean, yeah, can you hear that? You have this tiny bubbles here, but that's okay. Um, that's not the problem. Uh, where is my brayer? Ah, here. Then I take a brayer, so that's this normal brayer that you would use for the normal jelly plate um, techniques. And as you can see here, I have a little bit of white gesso here. I just have to check if it's, yeah, I think it's liquid enough. And I go in here very carefully. Okay, so that is really... Let me just take a, a new one. Sorry. Um, I had this here for the German version of this video. Um, so I just thought I could use it. But it's too much time in between of the both videos. So this is normal white gesso. You could, I believe you could use um, some acrylic paint as well. And now I have this here on my brayer, and you, uh, of course you could use um, another color than white, but I like this black and white style of this paper, so I take white. And now I go over my jelly plate to bring this thing here in the most thinnest layer uh, to my brayer. It has to be really, really thin so that nearly nothing is left here. But when you now roll over this, press really, really, really hard and you will see that a little bit, yeah, a thin layer of this gesso comes to your um, paper and that this die cut is pressing a little bit through the paper. And this is really hard to see, so you have to experiment uh, with this step a lot. So um, it can be that you have totally too much of this white gesso or too less and then you will get a fail. But um, yeah, I, I, please believe me, it's worth it to try it out and to try it several times. So and here I'm pressing really much, um, really much pressure to to uh, get this filigran thing here from the flower. Uh, to the paper okay so let's try it like this and it's really hard for me at the moment to see it because my camera is uh yeah above me i i can't uh put my head here so that my eyes can go close here to the paper but let's see what will happen here maybe we have to try it a second time so I will go from the right flower to the left so that you can see the results Yeah, after you have seen what I did here and how much I put here. I think you can't see that. No, it's, it's not so visible a little bit. So it looks like this. So let's heat it up, then you can see something. <laughs> So we could try to get it a little bit darker here. And um, I just learned something new. So uh, on the first, uh, uh, so the first thing that I want to say is now we have a really abstract um, result, I would say. And um, here you can also see the gesso that is here on the paper and only in between of this 
yeah, in this little tiny slots here, there's this black. The rest stays nearly white. It's some kind of a gray where the gesso is really thin and it's white when the gesso is a little bit thicker like here on the top. And this thing looks nearly like it is embossed. I don't know if you can see that in the camera. Perhaps I can show you another result that I just made. So uh, for the other video. So here it looks like it is yeah, some kind of relief thing. Hope you can see that. It's so hard to get that into the camera. But this is so cool. And I know that embossing is a theme for itself. And I don't want to say um, this is embossed because it is not of course and the embossing technique is a totally different oops sorry a totally different technique but the result i think it's really really similar hope you can th see that and what i just learned is um here can you see this line that goes from here to here this line i think it looks really interesting but do you know what that is I made this thing on my jelly plate and when I take this off I can still lightly see the um, frame here of the die cut and I think that um, this is yeah what is left here from from the plate when I yeah now would put it here and do it again I think I would have some um, patterns from just from the plate as well. So if you don't want to have that and if this is too abstract for you, then I would suggest to clean the plate before you put the die cuts on top. But that's something that I just yeah learned and I, I guess that this is the fact. So I'm not sure, but I think that it is the fact. So let's take the next one and heat it. And I think we have these lines here as well. Not so visible, but can you see this? I think that's the same thing, the same problem. But, yeah. Please tell me that you like this. Please tell me that you like this. I'm so in love. I'm so in love that it, it looks like, like uh, sand that is here on top and makes this flower i have so many associations when i i see this it's whew, sorry <laughs> i'm so thrilled that i can't hold the paper and this is so cool i'm i am so thrilled about that and as you perhaps have seen i went in this area i went a little bit closer with the heat gun um, to make it a little bit darker here inside of this flower. Um, with this gesso thing, of course, you can um, control this whole thing a little bit better and you can plan the things. Here is more gesso and I could uh, see that relatively quick while I was heating here. So I can imagine that um, here is some light and here, this thing here is also yeah some kind of a abstract light source for me so i can make it here a little bit darker to get more dimension to this piece um, so this is a little bit more controllable um, and i would say that this is relatively permanent now because the gesso stays here and even if the paper gets more heat um, only those areas here will get darker uh, to her to their maximum of darkness like yeah really dark black like here on this little petal here or here but um, the gesso will not change its color of course it will stay here so i would say that this is relatively permanent even if you um, put that into a journal and then go uh, to a summer holiday to an area where it's really really hot i would say that this is yeah can stay here um okay so 
What you also can do, and I would like to demonstrate that here on the third piece with the gesso, let me just bring this out of the way. Um, what you also can do is, um, of course, not not only with gesso. I mean, you can also do that on a normal piece of this paper without gesso. Um, you can take some water and spritz that here okay. so I can't see anything. I don't see where the flower is, so I can't control that. But you will see the effect in a second. Um, I thought when the paper is wet, it takes longer time to dry, of course. So I thought perhaps that can give us an effect that could be interesting. So that was the reason why I tried that out. And I will show you in a second how that looks. So um, I spritzed a little bit water, then I waited a little bit so um, that the water soaks into the paper i don't know if that is necessary but can you see now it's really transparent there where the water is i don't know if that is necessary but yeah it, it takes only seconds as you could see um, to soak that and then i will heat it up Okay, so this time my my water uh, things here are not so extreme. That's a little bit surprising for me now because I made that <laughs> half an hour ago when I recorded the German version of that video. So, I mean, of this content here. You know, I always have two uh, videos, one in German and one in English. And as you can see here, here the water drops are yeah not so extreme like here so even if that was the same amount of water drops but yeah you can see there's an effect you can get this really cool circles here and yeah so that's the third die cut thing with the gesso where nearly no gesso was left on my brayer and you see you get a really really clear result and really yeah crisp um I can't say print because it's not a print, but you you know what I mean. And I think also uh, those few water drops here get really yeah get they make some interest to this piece. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I think I like it. Uh, okay, so um, the next thing that you can do with this here, um, I found out by totally yeah it was an accident it was yeah i don't know it was an accident so um let me tell you the story behind this accident i purchased those stamps here the other day and they came with the post um and then i of course wanted to try them out so as you can see this here's still this um plastic thing here on top so <laughs> I yeah I had to try them out of course you can do it with this plastic but of course normally you would uh, take this off and remove that but yeah you can see I was not so patient I wanted to try that out so I took that stamp and I have put some black ink here in this top area and then I stamped to a normal piece of paper to see how that stamp comes out then I had other things to do and I forgot that I had used this already and that I had the black uh, ink here on top. That was a black stays on ink, this jet black ink, permanent. And then I came back after a few hours to my desk and I thought, oh, if this with the gesso works, 
Perhaps um, it will work with a stamp, but not with gesso because I don't want to destroy my stamp and I don't want to get the gesso here in these little uh, slots here. It would be really, really difficult to bring a thin but equal layer of gesso to my stamp. So I thought I have the Stazon Opaque uh, Cotton White ink pad. Without thinking about the fact that I have black ink here, I took my ink pad and pressed it here to get white ink to my uh, stamp. As you can see, my white ink pad in the meantime looks like this. That was not the plan. And then I thought, oh my goodness, I have to clean this stamp and I have to remove the ink. That was the point that I yeah ran to my um, cupboard and took the Stazon cleaner out. So this is, if you don't know that, um, yeah, a cleaning thing that removes permanent ink from your um, rubber stamps or this, yeah, silicone stamps. So it can remove every permanent ink. And because of the fact that this stamp is new, I of course wanted to remove those this gray ink as fast as possible. So I was here on my desk and I had this thing here and I went over it. So here now at the moment is no uh, ink, but you can imagine there is ink. And I went over it like so, like you would normally clean it. And then I realized that I don't have anything to go on top. Normalerweise, normalerweise, sorry, I'm mixing German and English. Normalerweise, German. Normally, I would use a clean uh, towel like this and go over this to get the ink and the cleaner uh, from the stamp, removed from the stamp. But um, I was too fast and haven't thought about that. And he was laying such a piece of paper from my experimenting. So I took that and, I, as I said, an accident. I took that and made it like this only to get this cleaner off from the stamp. For for uh, the, That was the only reason why I did that. And then I thought, okay, <laughs> hmm. <laughs> that looks interesting. I realized that here is really much of this cleaner liquid. So here is still um, some of this left on my stamp. So I went over the paper like so and made some random stamping here. So I mean, um, I was sure that this will disappear because it's only this liquid from the cleaner uh, when this is dry. And I thought, okay, when this is dry, the paper will be white again. Um, and yeah, then I was sitting here and I thought, okay, okay. And I saw that on the first paper where there's really much uh, of this liquid is, can you see that? It's beginning to react. I don't know why. And it's beginning to make outlines around this stamp. And I thought, oh my goodness, what is that? So, um, first of all, I uh, dried some areas uh, with my heat gun. And afterwards, I decided to try it with um, letting this air dry. So I will show you the difference. So when you take this here and heat it up, the following thing will happen.
Isn't that just crazy? Please tell me that you haven't seen that before. <laughs> so, I don't know, but this is so three-dimensional. This is so awesome. And even if you can't um, see the exact image of the stamp, I mean, it looks really, yeah, really abstract, but imagine this in an alien journal or in an um how is that called uh in a vampire journal for halloween projects um this is so awesome you could also um when this is totally dry as you can see here's still some um yeah some wet areas you could also um take a black pen and now draw your own uh eyes here from your imagination you could um, turn this stamp into a totally different piece. I mean, the possibilities are nearly endless. And you can see you get really um, different results um, depending on the heat that comes to your paper. I mean, here, as you could see, this was the first thing wh where um, much of this stays on cleaner was. So it takes longer to dry. Um, this paper has got more heat. And this one here was the second stamp with the stays on cleaner on the stamp. And um, you can see here the background is white and only the image, uh, yeah, is black. That's, yeah, a totally different thing. I mean, <laughs> if you use the stamp, you will get always nearly the same result. But uh, tell me a second technique that makes such different results from one stamp i don't know a second technique so that shouldn't sound arrogant but i want to spread my my joy about this and yeah that i'm so thrilled about that so um of course this is a really really um yeah uh not an abstract stamp that what shall come out of this stamp is really clear. I mean, with this faces and this writing and the numbers and that stuff. And it shall be, um, yeah, this girl here. So it's really a concrete, is that the right word? So the opposite of abstract thing. Um, I tried that out. The same thing with a more abstract stamp i can't find it so i used this stamp here it has this botanical things on it and as you can see this is really um yeah more abstract with this little grid piece here or these flowers um if the result gets not such clear it's not so the problem as when um perhaps um here with this thing here, you have, you need a really good imagination that this shall be this girl. Do you know what I mean? It's it's really hard to see. And here it would be not such a problem. So the results that I got from that stamp, you can see here. This one here is the first stamping with much of the cleaner on it. This is the second one and you can see it's much more detailed than the first one. Um, it's still abstract, but I think in this case, it's not so the problem because you can see, oh, there are leaves of some plants or this thing here looks so interesting for me. Um, it's, yeah, it's just abstract. And I think it's the better choice to use such an abstract stamp for this technique. So um, this one was with this stamp and I heated it with the heat gun. But I have another thing that's this one that I have let air dry. So I stamped in the same way like I did it here a second ago. And then I left this and I let that air dry. <sighs> I'm, I'm, I'm so happy. I'm so happy about this. And... Of course, this is not what the stamp 
makes. So, I mean, I can just demonstrate that um, so that you can compare it. So, let's just take a black, hopefully that will work. <laughs> I bought this the other day and I haven't stamped it in the normal way. I just used it <laughs> with the stays on cleaner on top and with this technique. So, hopefully... Uh, the first try of this stamp will get a clear um, result. <laughs> Let's see. Don't know. Okay, so let's see. Oh my goodness, is this beautiful. <laughs> Good choice. Okay, so uh, like this, the stamp is supposed to be. So let's let's perhaps only um, look at this uh, bottom thing here with this flower. And here's yeah some kind of a tiny mini ledger paper. This flower here and this little postage stamp here. Uh, postal, you know, how is that called? I don't know. Postmark, I think. And here is that area. that the stays on cleaner made. And yeah, I would like to, yeah, hopefully you can see that. I will try to um, post some of these things here as photos on my Instagram so that you can see that better. I think on a photo you can see that better and you can zoom it a little bit so that you can see it. Um, but I think you know what I mean. I, I, it's so crazy. It's just so crazy. Just compare the stamp with this thing here. It's a totally different thing, but this is interesting as well. And I think here you can see it the best. Um, the stamped thing is, of course, really clear, really crisp. Um, and it has this outline around the things. And here, um, you can see an outline as well, but it's around the outline of this. So there where the cleaner is on the stamp, there is nothing and the reaction is around this thing. It's so amazing. I think it's so amazing. <sighs> and I can imagine so many possibilities you can use that as i said as a collage fodder for um yeah collaging in your journals you can make copies of this and use it you can um yeah mix and that would also be a really interesting thing that uh, i haven't tried that out you can mix the stamping with um this here i mean <laughs> crazy isn't it <laughs> so Please leave a comment if you like this and if you want to see more ideas with this technique. I will definitely try more things out um, with those uh, with this uh, special paper. Sorry, I can't talk anymore. I definitely have to sleep some hours now. So, but please tell me and give me some kind of a feedback what you think about that and if you want to see more of those things if you want me to show you um yeah perhaps more ideas what you can do with those papers now because yeah now they are here and um, as you can see <laughs> there is <laughs> very much of this paper and really different results and of course um I would love to turn on the camera if you want to see more of this and more techniques, for example, making a tag out of this or how to use that as collage fodder, how to make a collage out of this, how to combine the results of this abstract things with the stamps itself or whatever. Um, if you have some ideas what you think could work and you want me to try that out, then please leave a comment and tell me what you think and what I can do um, and what you want to see. And look at these eyes. I haven't realized that. Can you see that? Oh my goodness, is this beautiful? Is this beautiful? I haven't seen it before. I think I uh, concentrated my eye here to the, the bottom and I haven't realized that this is so clear. It's so beautiful. Oh my goodness. 
I'm in love. Uh, yeah, okay, so <laughs> if you want me to see uh, making more of this, please leave a comment. Please let me know. Tell me your ideas, even if it's only a thought or something like that, and I will try to make something out of it. Um, I wish you a very creative time. Try this out. Have fun with it. And yeah, stay healthy. See you the next time. Bye bye.